Welcome back to another BBA series. So what are we gonna be doing today? Well, in a previous series, now this was a while back, we showed you how to create a, uh, what is it, a user form inside of VBA. And so basically what this user form was meant to do was take a particular Excel object and export it to the um, application of your choice. And what we're gonna be doing in today's video is we're gonna be kind of you know, expanding on that topic a little bit of user forms. But today's user form, what we're gonna be doing is creating something that will be able to query an SQL database from Excel and display it in the user form. So you can actually write the query in this particular user form. And from there, what you can do is you can execute a query. So the ultimate goal is we're gonna have something that's gonna look basically like this, right? <clears throat> and so very simple, very straightforward. Um, it just asks for a couple pieces of information. So I'll just temporarily put that in there. <clears throat> and then we'll put the stock database. Um, I have trusted authentication on, so I don't technically need to fill in these ones. So we'll just leave that off for the time being. And we'll put in our little query and you can tell it's nothing super crazy. Just select the top 10 rows from the TD price data. And if I click execute query, I get this nice pretty little table right down below, right? So, you know, nothing super crazy. I can't remember, that was, that was something different. Um, but you can see it allows you to select it. You can actually even rearrange these particular columns. You can make them bigger, smaller, all that kind of fun stuff. And <clears throat> if you want, you can also change your query as well. So you can do something like that um, and play around with it. So this is ultimately what we're gonna be building. <clears throat> so with that being said, let's get started. All right, so I have another workbook open. We're gonna use this one instead. So we'll just save it really quickly and we'll call it, <clears throat> where is it? SQL queries. And I'll just give it the name video. And I think from here we're good. All right, so first things first, like anytime we're working with VBA, we wanna go over to our developer tab. And then from here, we're gonna be doing our visual basic. Now this is the other code. I don't technically want this one. Um, so I want right down here, this one right up the top. We're gonna do insert a module, and then we're gonna do insert a user form. So very simple so far, hopefully. All right, so now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename our VBA module. And so if we go down here, we'll give it SQL form. Uh, what is SQL form? I'll just give it something like video, something I don't have to constantly think back about it. And then this one up here, we will also give it a wonderful name. We'll call it SQL form video. Uh, actually, we'll just call it SQL form video grid. No, we'll, we'll just leave. No, we can't do that because it's going to freak out if we do that. SQL form video, and then we'll just give it some like grid, something that just makes it a little bit different. Okay. So once you've done that, um, we now have two different kind of modules that we're gonna be working out of. The SQL form video module, this is basically what's gonna be actually displaying the user form and doing all sorts of fun stuff like making sure we can interact with it correctly and also making sure that we can um, change certain settings on it and stuff like that. So you can see kind of here, this is all down there. Um, <clears throat> So now that we're in this VBA module, we can actually start writing it. And so we'll just give it something, you know, user form, um, SQL video. And from here, what we'll do is we'll start declaring our variables. Some of these, I will explain how we can, what is the word, uh, get access to them. So there's certain controls and components of our user form that by default, you don't actually have access to, but if you do a little bit of a, magic behind the scenes, you can actually get access to some of these particular components. So very cool stuff. So first things first is we're going to define our object variables. Uh, nothing super crazy. The first one is just gonna be called 
SQL form, and this will be our SQL form video grid. So this is the actual user form itself. Then we're going to declare our user form control. And then there is MS forms dot control, right? So it's just a simple control object that belongs to our particular um, user form. So again, there is a Microsoft forms reference library and inside that is all the objects that exist inside of it. So you can see there's lots of different things. There's like a checkbox, combo box. Um, there's even some enumerations <clears throat> and there's even some HTML objects as well, images, all sorts of different things. So depending on how complex your form is, you can definitely customize it to your unique needs. All right, so here comes the fun part. <clears throat> now, remember when I first showed you the user form, there was that nice little grid at the bottom. So a lot of people really want to know how do you make a grid in a user form? Because, you know, a lot of times you're working in Excel, you're used to working in a table like environment. And so some people say, well, you can do these like little workarounds. Um, basically, what I started researching was, you know, is there like a true grid that we can get access to that's very similar to our Excel structure? And there is. However, it, um, what is the word? It's not available by default. So there's a couple ways to get access to it. So if you actually go to the form itself and, oh, I have to show my toolbox. Okay, perfect. So this is your toolbox. This is where you can um, add new tools and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, if you right click, in your particular toolbox, you'll see this option called additional controls. And these are all additional controls that you can actually add to your user form. So this is where people tend to go, wait a minute, you mean I have access to more than what's currently available? You have access to a lot of stuff that is not currently available. You can even see there's things related to Outlook. There are things related to whatever, what is it? RDP, I don't know what that is. Um, there's status bar, there is a slider, there's a, sh a shell folder view, scriptlet component. So there's actually a lot of different things that you technically have access to and you can add this to your particular user form. You're not necessarily restricted to what you just see on that toolbox. Now the particular control that I was working with is Microsoft, if you go up here, list view control. Now, normally what happens is once you select it, it will enable a reference library for you behind the scenes. So I've checked it. It means I wanna use that control. I'm good to go. I press okay. And <clears throat> you'll see some options here that uh, you can then access. Now, they might not be exactly on the control aspect, but you will be able to access it um, when you actually put it in here. So you can see here's your list view, and so you can actually adjust it as need be. So you get access to some of it, but um, you might have to access it through the code as well uh, in some cases. Now, let's just say for whatever reason, it didn't enable that reference library like it was supposed to. If you go to tools, down to references, you will find a wonderful library called Microsoft Windows Common Controls 6.0. You want to make sure you enable that library. So that will give you access to that particular control that belongs in that reference. Now, keep in mind, depending on the control that you're adding, you might be adding a different reference but normally when you add the control to the toolbox, or sorry, from the toolbox uh, screen, it normally enables the reference for you. But this is also another way if for whatever reason it didn't work. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new object variable and we'll call it list view control. <clears throat> and now you will see we'll have a list view object. So that means we have access to that particular um, component. So now that we've done that, let's go on to the next section. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new instance 
of the form. And so how do we do that? Well, we're going to set our SQL form object to a new SQL form video grid. So the actual user form itself, and we cannot change some of its behavior. Now, some of the behavior we will kind of change in the sense of being able to click inside and outside of that particular object, whatever it might be. Um, sometimes we can also change the behavior of the actual controls. Now, what we're going to do in a second is we're going to actually create our user form and stuff like that, and then give certain components names. Um, for the actual list view control, what we're going to be naming it is called query results. So assuming we have added that to our form and assuming we gave it the name, what we can do is we can add a reference to it using our list view control object variable. So the first thing we'll do is we'll grab the query. Well, I'll be very correct. Query results control. Um, just as a reminder, oh, sorry, reminder, this is the list view um, object. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set that list view control equal to our SQL form object. And if you go into that uh, form object, you'll see the controls collection. This is all the controls and you can access it by passing through the control name. Now we're going to be naming our list view control query results. And once you've done that, you now have a reference to that control. So let's change some of the behavior. So the first thing is I want to be able to reorder my columns so I can put one right in front of the other, right? So reorder uh, reorder columns. Okay. So we're going to say list view control. You can see there's a bunch of different properties and stuff like that. Um, so I want to say allow column reorder and we'll set that equal to true. I want the appearance to be flat. So this is just more of a design aesthetic component. So this will make it a flat appearance. So I want the appearance and uh, we'll just say flat appearance, flat appearance. And so we'll say list view control dot appearance equals CC flat. Now, <clears throat> technically there's a simpler way to do this. So for example, you can kind of see it's like Alex, you just keep typing each thing, right? Of course. Right. So what you could also do if you want, you could say with list view control and with you can set multiple properties at once. So this is just kind of a more shorthand notation where you don't have to keep typing list view control. So maybe I want to do multi-select. So I want to select multiple items at once. So I'm going to set that equal to true. Hmm, what else? So multi-select, turn on. What else can we do? Well, I want the font to be something very specific. So I can say I want the font and I want the font to be, um, I have Roboto installed on my system so I can set it to that. You might not be able to, but you know, there's Arial and all sorts of other fancy ones. So change the font. Okay, so I've changed the font. What else do I wanna change? <clears throat> um, there's kind of this behavior where if I select one field, it will select the entire row. So that means if I select like one cell in the particular column, it just selects the entire row. Again, it really depends how you know you want the interaction. Um, select entire row when selecting single field. And so what that means is there is a full row select equal true. So if you set that, it will select an entire row when they select a, um, a, a field. Um, the view, uh, this is kind of just how the, the data is displayed. There's icon, list, report, and small icon. I want report. This is kind of the more simple one. So uh, change the view to report. And then we can also add grid lines. Uh, by default, there are not grid lines. I like having grid lines. It helps kind of just uh, make the data a little bit easier to see. So add some grid lines. All right. So that's changing all the wonderful properties about our particular control object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just move that down a tiny bit. 
And the fat, uh, sorry, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change our actual SQL form uh, show property. Now, for whatever reason, previously I had this work, but now VBA is being picky and won't let me change it. So normally what I was able to do is I could just type the keyword argument and I could just say control J um, VB uh, mode list, right? Now, for whatever reason, it doesn't like me doing that. Um, I'll leave it VB mode list, kind of just see what happens. We'll figure out what happens. The alternative is you have to put zero. So zero is VB mode list. Um, I used to just do the keyword argument, but apparently it doesn't like that now. Not sure why, but you know, you have multiple options. So what does this actually do? Well, this makes it where I can click outside my user form. So if I want to click in an Excel range or something like that, I'm not restricted from doing that. Um, if it's in mode list, it means you can do that. If it's not in mode list, so if it's just kind of in a default uh, show property, then what happens is you can't uh, click outside of it. So make it where I can click outside of the user form. Okay, let me check the time. Yeah, okay, we'll close it off. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna finish the first video of this series, just a quick recap of what we did. Um, we created a new user form. We created the two modules that we're gonna be writing the code in. We talked a little bit about the list view control. So this is a control that by default, um, you don't have enabled, but if you go to the toolbox, you can enable that control and you actually saw there's multiple other controls that you can access. And once you do that, when you, when you enable those controls, sometimes they will enable a reference library behind the scenes. If they didn't, you can manually um, set that reference yourself, but usually VBA does a good job for that. Um, and so we did that and then we started writing the first module. So the first module is just declaring your form object variable, your components, basically the ones that you want to um, control and stuff like that. The main one that we're really focused with at this point is simply the list view control. So this is gonna be where our data is stored after the query is executed. And we saw that there's a lot of different properties. We can rearrange the columns, we can change the appearance. Um, we can also simplify setting those properties by using a with statement. <clears throat> and so we turned on a bunch of different things like font, multi-select, and all sorts of kind of fun stuff. Um, and we'll kind of go over that in more detail once we have a working form and we can see um, how when we change one property, it might um, change some of the behavior. Um, so what's coming in the next video? Well, next video, we're going to actually build the user form. Um, I'm going to kind of introduce you to some documentation for certain controls if you don't have access to it. Um, just an FYI, the list view control, I couldn't seem to find any VBA uh, references on it. So unfortunately, uh, there's not much there. But normally, when you look at the kind of the actual object when you use IntelliSense, most of it's kind of intuitive, not all the time. Like personally, this was not intuitive. That was kind of intuitive, sort of, but you know what I mean. So it's kind of restrictive in that regard, but it's still there. You still have something to reference and I'll kind of show you some other documentation. It's not for VBA, but it is for C Sharp. So at least it will give you some type of idea of, you know, how when you change one property, it might, um, what is the word, change some of the behavior. So that's in video number two. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Other than that, we will see you in video number two.